the question was, I came in with the candida issue, candida overgrowth, and if I haven't completely eliminated it and I go home and I'm eating fruit, am I not going to be encouraging the growth of that candida and contributing to the problem rather than to the solution of the problem? My experience over the last 25 years of coaching people, even before I was fasting people, I was coaching people on changing their diet and making better choices. And my experience was that most people do perfectly fine with candida eating fruit. Okay? Fruit does not create a problem. Remember, candida feed on sugar, but your body runs on sugar. You always have sugar in your bloodstream. If you don't, you're an ex-human. Can't survive without sugar in your bloodstream. So what tends to exacerbate candida, the, the presence of, of sugar, the, you know, the consuming fruit doesn't create a candida problem. However, if you have an overgrowth and you're eating poorly, including eating fruit with fat, then you're going to be contributing to a problem because the fat in the bloodstream is going to prevent the body from efficiently removing the excess sugar from the bloodstream. And now you're saying to those candida who before might have gotten a little bit here and there, now you're saying, hey, it's an all-you-can-eat buffet, come on down. Okay, 12 hours, there's going to be tons of sugar here, help yourself. Okay, you don't want to create situations like that. If eating fruit, for most people, if eating correctly, does not create high blood sugar because high fiber and high water content slow the absorption of that sugar into the bloodstream, we don't tend to get blood sugar spikes eating fruit most of the time. If you're eating it with fat, you know, you're eating with nuts and seeds, eating a lot of avocados with sweet fruit, then you might be creating an issue. Okay? If you suspect there might still be a problem, don't do that. Okay? Keep, you know, stick to mono meals, have your salads with avocado only at night, avoid nuts and seeds. Um, avoid, there's a few fruits you want to avoid with candida. Most people with candida will do better if they don't eat citrus. Most will do better if they don't eat cantaloupes and other crenellated melons. A crenellated melon, like a cantaloupe, on the outside it has those grooves, looks like a brain, kind of. Okay? That's what those are called crenellations. In the grooves of the cantaloupe and in the, the pores of the citrus fruit will grow an invisible food mold. It's not a problem for most of us. But if you've got a candida problem, you need to avoid molds. So if you, if you hold an orange and peel it and eat it, you've got this mold on your hands, you're not going to avoid getting it in your mouth. If you cut a cantaloupe open, you're pulling that mold into the fruit and you're going to eat some. Okay? It's very difficult to handle these fruits without consuming some of the mold. So if you've got a candida problem, I would avoid them. I would also encourage you to avoid bananas and dates. But you know, th this is not so much for you guys because after 26 days fasting, like 25 today, 26 tomorrow, you, it's very unlikely you're going to have a candida problem. It almost always goes away after 21 days or more. 26 is insurance. Um, it's not likely to be there. But if it is, avoid these things. You'll probably be fine. Don't eat citrus if you feel like there's an issue. Okay? Chances are good there won't be one. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's a huge thing. It's, it's the presence of excess fat in the bloodstream. So for people with candida problems, avoiding overt fats or being very cautious how you eat them. If you eat them with lettuce, you know, without, without anything with a lot of sugar, it's not really a problem. Um, but it's why we serve salads only at night, right? only for the last meal, so that you don't have the fat in your bloodstream when you eat again the next time. Eat it at night. By the time you have your next meal, it's gone. Well, it, it might be a bit of an issue for someone that still had a candida problem, but people here aren't likely to have one. After a fast of uh, 30 days, yeah. right? There's virtually no can. I mean, there might still be some candida because almost everybody has some. The, the question is to go from candida taking over the digestive tract and all the beneficial stuff here to changing the balance. You may still have some candida, but they're no longer controlling the environment. It's no problem. You should have no problem. You, you still want to, you may still want to be cautious about how often you do that. You know, I was telling Ferdinand today, I don't eat salads that way. We do it for you guys. 
And it's, you know, it's not something I'd recommend doing every night. I only make dressings when I'm feeding other people. I don't make them for myself, most of the time. The antibiotics kill the beneficial bacteria, which prevent the yeast from taking over. They're allowing the yeast to flourish because the bacteria that are normally there and healthy are no longer present in sufficient numbers to keep them in check. You've simply created an imbalance in your body by consuming something which kills living organisms, including bacteria, and eventually you. Okay, an antibiotics, I mean, make no mistake about it, antibiotics are incredibly dangerous. And, you know, people eat them like candy today to the extent that there's almost no way to treat childhood ear infections anymore because they've become completely resistant to all the antibiotics on the market. Okay? People, you should be using, I mean, if, if I believed, if I had an infection that I thought would kill me if untreated, then I would take an antibiotic, but only then. That's the only time I would ever take one again. If I thought I would actually die if I didn't. They should not be used so haphazardly. A lot of people, the first sign of anything, they just take an antibiotic, just in case it's bacteria. Every time you do that, you're helping to destroy your immune system. Don't do this. Okay, that's, this is why you wind up with a raging problem, because you completely decimated the bacteria, which make up the greatest part of your immune system. Is there yeast in antibiotics? Not that I know of. I don't know. Penicillin, is, penicillin came from a mold. Bread mold is where penicillin came from. Uh, yeah. Yeah, antibiotics, antibiotics, I mean, literally, antibiotic means against life. Antibiotics are things that kill the organisms in your body. That's what they are. Okay, onions and garlic are natural antibiotics. That's why I don't eat them and don't recommend eating them. That's what they do, that's what they are. What is the best food to increase the bacteria? Fruits and leafy greens. That's it. That's it. Not, not only... The, the beneficial bacteria in your gut, okay, in a healthy gut, roughly 50% of them ideally came from human breast milk. Okay, if you didn't get any, you might want to find a pregnant woman. Um, the, the other 50% come from fruits and vegetables. We get them from the produce, assuming it's organic, because if it's not, there are probably not any living things in that produce. If we're... If we're buying commercial produce, which is sprayed with pesticides, those kill living organisms. So the bacteria aren't likely to survive that process to any great extent. But you eat organic produce, you're getting those beneficial bacteria. Okay? It, it dramatically increases the bacteria in your gut. Does it give you the proper balance? I don't think so. They're very acid-forming foods, heavy on the acidic stuff. I don't think we should be using fermented foods. And I've got a couple of videos talking about this already. I don't think we should be using these things and don't think we need to. The best thing you can do, give your body a chance to cleanse and heal. You're already, as you know, already Ferdinand found, already Ben found. Hey, look, the yeast seem to be gone. Already. They have to do anything. They don't have to consume anything. They had to give their body a chance to cleanse and heal. Now they can just eat fruits and vegetables, and those bacteria, the ones that should be there, are going to thrive and flourish. We don't need to do anything else, okay? The, you know, the best thing is to avoid the antibiotics. For women, avoid birth control pills. They will kill beneficial bacteria. Avoid onions and garlic. We avoid these things. We're likely to have a healthy gut, you know, flora system. There's really nothing else we need to do. That's, that's been my experience. Enemas and, and uh, colonics, hydrotherapy, do flush out beneficial bacteria from the colon. So they will negatively impact your ability to digest properly. And Herbert Shelton, the American naturopath who conducted some 40,000 documented fasts, experimented and found that when people used colon hydrotherapy, they had poorer bowel function afterward. Okay? You're, you're not helping anything. So... You know, what we find here, did you have some trouble eliminating some old stuff at some point? During my old stuff? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, a lot of people do. But you did it, and now you're eliminating only fruit and salad. Yeah. Okay? We don't need to do anything. 
You know, again, you guys have heard me say this. Some of you think I'm crazy. I am probably, but not necessarily for this reason, that the best we can do is to intelligently get out of the body's way. Our bodies have this virtual intelligence. We don't even understand most of it. We just need to leave the body alone, give it the conditions it needs. It will flourish. Okay? It's, it's, a, it's again, it's a short book. So I'm going to say more than that, but... That's, that's really, that's, that's the essence of it, okay? Learn how to intelligently get out of your body's way and let it do what it needs to do and stop friggin' trying to manipulate it. We don't need to put more beneficial bacteria in there with probiotics. We don't need to put more in there with fermented foods. We don't need to, do any, we don't need to flush out the, the colon with enemas and colonics. We don't need to do anything. And when we do any of these things thinking, I'm making it better, we're, we're screwing up the natural balance. Now the body has to, the body's going... What did you just do? I, like, I had that perfect, that floral balance almost perfect. Now you flushed all this stuff out. Wh why'd you do that? It's like, well, I wanted to have a bowel movement. I know you did, but it was, was going to happen soon. You didn't need it. Now, every once in a while, okay, when you guys are feeding, it's possible that you're going to have a plug of old hard stuff. And every once in a while, I actually encourage someone, you might want to try an enema. But that's an enema, Okay. Like not, you know, not like start using enemas regularly and consistently because if you do, you will damage your function. I, I've, I've told this story many times before, but years and years ago on a bulletin board page, someone asked me, do you recommend hydrotherapy while people are fasting? I said, no, I don't. And some guy wrote and said, I respectfully disagree. Lauren, he said, I've used enemas every day for 25 years and they keep me regular. I wrote back and said, I'm not sure, but I think regular means you can have a bowel movement without mechanical assistance. He probably couldn't. You give the body a crutch, it becomes dependent on the crutch. Okay, I know I'm repeating myself, but these things are so important. I think it's okay to hear them a couple times. You, you, wanna, you wanna seriously consider, is this natural to be doing this? Because if it's not, it's a crutch. Okay, we're trying to support the body the way the crutch supports us when our leg is broken. It's an unnatural crutch. Sometimes we might need a crutch, briefly, sometimes. But most of the time, we really don't. Okay, we'd probably be better off when we break a leg not using a crutch, but instead, lying on our back and resting completely. Okay, if we're having a problem with our gut, we'd probably be better off not using a crutch, the, the probiotic crutch or the fermented food crutch and simply giving the body a chance to cleanse and heal. Because that usually does it. And when we do it that way, we always maintain or recreate the perfect natural balance. Every time we get involved, we tend to screw things up. Okay, we tend to make the body imbalanced in some way. Okay, Any questions or comments?